Hey, and welcome back to Wild Mythology. I welcome you to the channel with bread and salt. For today's video, we're going to cover some gods of nature from mythology and folklore. But before we get to that, don't forget to join this month's mythology giveaway for Neil Gaiman's book on Norse mythology. An awesome 300 page book filled with the most famous myths, gods, and creatures from Norse mythology. All you have to do to join our giveaway is subscribe and leave a comment on this video. Plus, somewhere in this video is our mythology scavenger question. Answer the question correctly in the comments and you'll get an extra ballot for a chance to win the giveaway. So keep an eye out for that. Now, I think it's time for the gods of nature. Number one, Pan. In Greek mythology, Pan was the god of shepherds, rustic music, and the wilds. Pan's birth was quite interesting. He was the child of Hermes and the nymph Penelope, but instead of being born in the form of a man, Pan was only half. You see, Pan was born with the lower body and horns of a goat, and because of his form, Pan was associated with satyrs and fauns. This connection also made Pan associated with fertility and sex. Examples of this can be seen in a few myths. In mythology, Pan was known to live in the mountains and forests of Arcadia, where he deeply enjoyed seducing nymphs. One day, Pan came upon the nymph Syrinx, who ran quickly away from the wild god. Syrinx ran to her sisters and asked them to hide her from Pan. Doing so, Syrinx's sisters put her in a reed bush and transformed her into a reed. Angry that he couldn't recognize which of the reeds was his love, Pan took several of the plants and made the very first Pan flute, also known as the Syrinx. In many myths, Pan would use an ability that was unique to the wild god. The word panic, meaning sudden uncontrollable fear, gets its origins from Pan because of this unique ability. You see, when he was extremely angry or in battle, Pan would bellow out a horrible scream called a panic. This scream would cause all who heard it to feel true fear, causing them to either be stunned or run in terror. This horrible panic was used against many deities, including the king of monsters, Typhon, and unfortunately, the misfortunate nymph Echo. After being cursed to only repeat the words of others by Hera, Echo lost the man she loved when Narcissus killed himself. It was during her grief that Pan came upon her. Infatuated, Pan tried to seduce Echo, but Echo insulted Pan. Furious, Pan used his panic scream on his followers, making them feel great fear for Echo. In their fear, they ripped her apart and threw the pieces into the mud. Afterwards, Gaia collected Echo's pieces and spread them across the world to echo the voices of others. Pan is also unique in the fact that he is the only god to truly die in the Greek myths. In the myth, a sailor named Thamis was sailing to Italy when suddenly he heard a voice in the wind. This divine voice told Thamis that the wild god Pan was dead and that he was to proclaim this to everyone the moment he made land. Thamis listened to the voice and accomplished his mission with great sadness. Number 2. Sir Nunnos. From Celtic mythology, we have Sir Nunnos, the horn god associated with animals, fertility, vegetation, forests, and the wild. Unfortunately, like a lot of Celtic myths and deities, there isn't a whole lot of information about Sir Nunnos. What we do know is that Sir Nunnos means horn in the Gaulish language. We also know that Sir Nunnos's name and image appears on monuments and plaques. These images depict Sir Nunnos sitting cross-legged and surrounded by numerous beasts, as well as images of Sir Nunnos holding a coin pouch, which could associate the horned god with material wealth. From the images with the animals, we can speculate that Sir Nunnos was a god of the wild. As for how Sir Nunnos survived into the modern era, we have to thank the witch cult hypothesis, which interestingly is also the origin of the Wicca religion. The witch cult hypothesis is the idea that the witch trials during the 1400s to the 1800s were an attempt to destroy a pagan religion that had survived the spread of Christianity in Europe. Supposedly, the surviving pagan religion resolved around witchcraft and a horned god who was the god of fertility, the hunt, the wild, and the underworld. In her 1931 book, The God of Witches, a woman named Margaret Murray stated that the Horn God was the main god of this pagan religion and had many different names across Europe, such as Sir Nunnus and Pan. 
and while the book has problems, her claims were what brought Sir Nunnis back into the modern era. Like we mentioned earlier, the witch cult hypothesis was the origin of the Wicca tradition, which assimilated Murray's writings, especially those of the Horned God. Nowadays, within the Wicca tradition, the Horned God is associated with the seasons and life and death, and is a blend of Sir Nunnis, Pan, and many other Horned Gods within mythology. Number 3. Mother Nature Within all mythologies and folklore, there is a central character known as Earth Mother, Mother Earth, or Mother Nature, who is the embodiment and personification of nature itself. Around the world, Mother Nature is known by many names. Gaia or Demeter from Greek mythology, Jord from Norse mythology, Prithvi from Hindu mythology, and many others. But what about as a singular being? Was Mother Nature ever separated from her connection with the goddesses from other mythologies? The answer to that is yes, and for an explanation we have to look at the Middle Ages. Medieval Christians thought of Mother Nature as a creation of God, who was in charge and responsible for nature. For them, she was a personification and not a goddess because of her non-association with paganism and because she was more of an imaginative being. During the medieval periods, Mother Nature became extremely popular in writings, art, and discussion. Nowadays, in popular culture, we even have some great and amusing portrayals of her, such as in the Santa Claus movies where she is the head of the council for legendary figures. Hey, it's time for our mythology scavenger question. Here's the question. Who is the main trickster god from Norse mythology? Make sure to comment your answer so you can get an extra ballot to win this month's giveaway. Now, back to the gods of nature. Number 4. Konohana Sakuyahimi Konohana Sakuyahimi was the goddess of Mount Fuji, volcanoes, and cherry blossoms in Japanese mythology. In mythology, Ninigi no Mikoto, the grandson of the sun goddess Amaterasu, was looking for a wife when one night he met Sakuyahimi. Falling instantly in love, Ninigi asked Sakuya's father for her hand, but Sakuya's father wanted Niniji to marry his other daughter, Iwa Nagahimi, the rock princess. Niniji refused, telling Sakuya's father that he was deeply in love with Sakuya Himi. Sakuya's father reluctantly agreed, but told Niniji that because he had chosen Sakuya Himi instead of Iwanaga, that he had cursed all humans. You see, the curse made human lives short and fleeting, like the cherry blossom petals. If Niniji had chosen Iwanaga, the lives of humans would have been strong and everlasting, like stone. After getting married, Sakiya Himi became pregnant after one night with her new husband. Suspecting that she had already been pregnant before their marriage, Niniji accused Sakiya Himi of being impregnated by a different god. Outraged with her husband's words, Sakiya Himi locked herself inside a hut and lit it on fire. Inside the fiery hut, Sakiya Himi gave birth to three sons and declared that they would only burn if they weren't the children of Niniji. Luckily, none of the children burned, but unfortunately for Niniji, he was banished to the couch for a very long time. And there it is, I give you the gods of nature. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you would like us to cover something from mythology, folklore, or legend, make sure to leave a comment and we'll add it to our video list. Well, that's all for now. Until next time on Wild Mythology.